if we look here, we can see that any tangent to the circle, if we can remember this circle property, is going to be perpendicular to the radius. So in other words, the radius is part of the normal to the tangent, isn't it? It's a line segment that is part of the line that's perpendicular to the tangent. So we can use this to find out equations of the radius. Or we can use the radius to give us the gradient of the tangent. I will always advise you to draw diagrams when solving circle problems. Draw it out and it tells you a lot of the information visually, makes it a lot easier to answer the questions. So we're trying to find the equation of the tangent at the point 5, 7 on a circle with centre 2, 3. So we can put that information in, 2, 3 is the centre. It's worth putting this roughly where it would be. Well, 5 and 7 is bigger than 3, isn't it? So up there somewhere. So anywhere there, give you a rough idea. So the tangent will look like that. And that instantly gives us quite a lot of information. We can see the gradient's negative, because as we move in a positive x direction, the line's going down, isn't it? The y value is getting smaller. So it's a straight line. We need the gradient. Because the tangent is perpendicular to the radius, if we work out the gradient of the radius between 2, 3 and 5, 7, we can then use the negative reciprocal of that, minus 1 over m if you like, to find the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient m1 is the difference in y over the difference in x. And we can then use, to find the m we need for our equation of the tangent, we can then use the fact that it's the negative reciprocal. It's minus 1 over the gradient of this normal, if you like, the radius. And then once we've got the m, we can sub in any any values on the line, can't we? We've only got one. We've got this 5, 7. So we can use that value for x and that value for y to find what c is. Or we can use the equation y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 and use 5 for x1 and 7 for y1. So let's have a go at that. The gradient then of this line, the m1 is 4 over 3. That tells us that the gradient we want for the tangent is minus 3 quarters. So we put the minus 3 quarters in here. The point on the tangent we've got is 5, 7. So we put those values in. Find out c. We get this equation. We generally don't leave numbers in the denominator, do we? So we multiply through by 4 to get rid of those. And we end up with an equation that looks like that. Here you notice we've also taken the x over with the y. OK, I'll draw this before I explain it. If we've got a perpendicular from the centre of the circle that goes through a chord 
then if it's perpendicular, in other words, if it makes a 90 degree angle, it will bisect the chord. So these two lengths are the same. So we're going to try and find, well, this is the midpoint of a chord. So we're going to find an equation of the chord. Well, to do that, if we draw first, as we've done before, right on the points, well, we know that that midpoint there is 4, 3. The other information we're going to have to get from here. So we need to complete the square to get the information from the circle. So we complete the square to find the center. That will then enable us to find the gradient of the radius. Because the chord is perpendicular, we could use the negative reciprocal then for the gradient of the chord. And then we use our normal method like we use with the tangent. We substitute the values of that gradient in and the coordinates of the midpoint for three to find our equation. So complete the square. We end up with that equation, which tells us that the center is at three, four. To find the gradient of the radius, we use the difference in y over the difference in x using the two coordinates of the two points. And we get a gradient of minus 1. So we're interested in finding the equation of the chord. So we need the gradient of the chord, which is the negative reciprocal of this gradient, which is, of course, 1, isn't it? So our m is 1. Our x1 and y1 are 4 and 3. We can either use the equation y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, or find out c using y equals mx plus c. So the equation of the chord is y equals x minus 1. OK, time for you to have a go. If you can do this, then you'll be ready for the lesson. OK, I'll show you the answers. So the equation is y equals minus x plus 8.